So if in Screencast 2 we looked at directions of development, um, and I appreciate that there was a lot to take in there, and some of that could be confusing, uh, but there will be an opportunity to talk about this over the coming weeks in seminars. Um, and I particularly understand that maybe the kind of, you know, um, vertical integration and horizontal um, integration um, and outsourcing and how that relates to vertical integration, that, that that can be confusing, but we can discuss those strategic options um, in the weeks ahead of us. Um, but I want to try and take a hopefully um, a simpler view um, of the other dimension of corporate strategy, which is once we've decided which direction or directions it might be appropriate to move in for various aspects of the business, the strategic business units, um, then we can start to think about, okay, well, how can we move in those directions? What are the methods of development which are available to us? And this is the subject of Screencast 3. So quite simply, um, there are three basic methods of development. Um, Method one is internal development, where the organisation moves into its strategic direction by using its own resources and competencies and capabilities. It goes it alone without the need for support or resources from another organisation. However, that might not always be possible or appropriate, and we might see good opportunities um, within the market for our organisation to expand. But we might recognise that we might not have the relevant resources or capabilities or competencies to do that at the minute, or we could do it better and more successfully if we, to, if we were to work with another organisation. So the next method is strategic alliances. Um, and this quite obviously is where organisations seek to develop using a, a range of approaches based on cooperation with other organisations. And usually these strategic alliances or partnerships, um, the organisation stays separate. Um, it's probably for a fixed period around a specific project um, or a specific time period or a specific area of work. Um, so, so there are a number of examples of this. Our class sponsorship um, as a, a, an example of a strategic alliance. Um, but particularly in the public sector, <clears throat> that there are, you know, lots of examples of partnerships of organisations working together. So, for example, um, if the police want to address crime related issues, they may develop a partnership with the sport organisation to help them deliver sport activity with the aim of addressing antisocial behaviour and reducing crime. So th there are lots of kinds of examples on the kind of public sector side of things as well. And then the, the third method of direction is, or methods of development is uh, mergers and acquisitions. So this is distinct from strategic alliances because this is where organizations merge their operations um, and um, an organization becomes subsumed within the corporate structure of another organization. And we talked about some examples of this already. We've talked about um, Adidas buying Reebok, um, football clubs acquiring football clubs in other leagues, gyms merging with other chains of gyms. Um, there aren't many examples I can think of from national governing bodies, but for example, I have been in meetings um, in the past where tennis, squash, badminton have talked about a kind of overall umbrella racket sports um, kind of sport development initiative to look at the kind of pathways and links between the different racket sports to see if by working together, they can kind of work smarter um, to try and grow the demand and participation in racket sports overall. So there might be some families of sports which can work together on a kind of an umbrella. Um, but I would say that's probably more of a strategic alliance on reflection than it is a merger and acquisition because I, I, you know, I haven't been in meetings where 
the different governing bodies are talking about merging, they're talking about collaboration, um, which is more of a strategic alliance. The thing to be aware of with um, mergers and acquisitions is that um, although they can grab the headlines and there's often an awful lot of money involved, um, research shows, and in the workbook this week, there is a link to a Harvard Business Review magazine article, which explains that 70 to 90% of mergers and acquisitions fail in terms of they don't deliver the improved efficiency, the synergy, the improved performance overall to organisations and particularly organisations that are acquired um, that managers and directors may have expected when they um, pushed the merger and the acquisitions through. So really this kind of brings us back to the Ansoft matrix idea, which is a lot of mergers and acquisitions, many of them um, are delivered by organisations seeking to expand into unrelated areas of business. Um, and this brings up the question of the corporate parent and whether there is sufficient expertise within the corporate parent to really be able to um, enable those organisations to succeed in, in unrelated areas where the corporate organisation as a whole doesn't have experience in those areas. So that's just something to bear in mind um, when thinking about mergers and acquisitions, that they need to be um, approached with um, caution. So I've, I've talked to you about this kind of directions and methods template, um, and there's a grid here that I just want to explain and talk to you, talk you through. And this is something that we will look at in seminars in more details. So what we've seen in this lecture so far is that um, we've got some kind of overall some directions of development which all operation which organizations can consider in thinking about their strategic future and, and, and what they might do and we've seen that the directions um, range from withdrawal from a market divesting through to protecting and building existing areas so your cash cows your market penetration, thinking about what you're going to do to kind of preserve your market share for existing products amongst existing customers and to exploit and grow your market share with existing customers and existing products um, from Ansoft's matrix. So a market penetration type strategy. We've also seen that we've also seen that um, organizations can move into related markets and products. And then the risk use of these ventures then is moving into unrelated markets and products. So we've got four basic directions, um, but we can group those into kind of three areas, which are kind of, you know, um, withdraw and concentrate on related areas, which includes protect and build and move into related areas. And then we've got unrelated. OK, so we've got kind of um, we've, we've got kind of, you know, withdraw, stay where we are and move into new areas. Um, and then up the methods matrix, really, we've got, as we've just seen, internal, using our own resources, strategic alliances and merger and acquisition. Um, I think as well, particularly along the kind of directions um, arrow here, this is best seen as a continuum rather than there are distinct boundaries between each of these categories because some of the kind of move into related markets and products they could be slightly related but not highly related so we could be kind of thinking all right well is this moving into related or is it moving into unrelated areas i don't want you to get hung up on classifying things into boxes i just want you to be aware of the range of options um, but if we if we look at this um, these these kind of dimensions of directions and methods, and we combine them, what we can see is if we combine the four directions here with the three methods here, this gives us 12 grids or 12 boxes on a grid, and each box represents um, the, the, one of the directions and one of the methods. So, for example, if we um, decide to move into related products and markets, 
So we decide first of all the direction and then we think, is this something we can achieve through our own internal resources? Or do we need to achieve it through a strategic alliance? Or might this be best achieved through a merger and an acquisition with another organisation um, that works there? But if we pool our resources, we might be able to achieve this more successfully and move into this related area more successfully. Um, so really, th these boxes represent options. So what I would say to you is, first of all, thinking about the kind of... Um, the opportunities and threats in the external environment, you might think, well, which of the directions is most appropriate for my organization? Once you've considered directions, then think about internally, whether you've got the strengths um, to actually, and the resources to actually implement this yourself, or think about, well, if this is a great option, do I need to look at a strategic alliance or a merger and acquisition? So first of all, think about the direction and then think about, you know, the, the possible method. So what this means is rather than filling each box with options for your organization, you might decide on one or two directions and you might decide on one or two methods. So it could be that you end up with four options here and you decide that you might want to move into related or unrelated areas and you don't think you can do that with internal resources but you flag up strategic alliance options or merger and acquisition options for this as methods via which this could actually be um, developed and considered. So you don't need to populate every single box because not every single box will be appropriate or possible and, and a lot of this is still rooted in your assessment of the strategic position of the organization, which might mean that some things are totally closed off. If you decide that you are, you've got lots of weaknesses and there aren't a great many opportunities, you might decide that moving into related or unrelated markets at this time is not for you and that you need to concentrate on protecting existing areas and maybe building areas so you might decide on a kind of retrenchment type strategy in which case you'd probably be looking at you know these two boxes you might decide that you know things are things are difficult so you might be looking at withdrawing from some aspects so it's unlikely or it, it, it's not necessary that you look at all of the directions really because not all of the directions will be appropriate for you and I've already said that for national governing bodies and international federations, withdrawal is, is very unlikely and moving into unrelated markets and products is very unlikely. But protecting and building what you currently have is going to be very relevant and moving into related markets or products to actually grow participation, to grow your sport is also highly relevant. So I'd expect some things in these two columns here and it's then up to you to decide how might these things best be achieved. Is it internal resources, strategic alliances, or mergers and acquisitions? Now, I don't want to talk through this in lots of detail. Um, I've tried. What I've tried to do is think about some examples of, and it's orientated this way. I know it's slightly confusing because this is the bottom axis on the previous slide, yeah? and this is the um, left-hand axis on the previous slide. But what I've tried to do is just populate this with some examples of, okay, if we're talking about withdrawal, for example, using internal development methods, that's just close it down, yeah? Liquidate the business, or try and, uh, you know, probably just closing down aspects of the business. If you've got old brands as part of your portfolio, particularly if you're a manufacturer, you might want to license manufacturing of certain brands <clears throat> to another manufacturer. You might, you might in essence, <clears throat> do a deal with them to grant them a license that they can manufacture and brand their goods using a brand that you own and you generate some income from that. but you do. So essentially, it's a kind of outsourcing. You outsource this kind of operation. Um, and then, you know, withdrawal through mergers and acquisitions is disposal, 
or demerger or management buyout, you actively look to sell off part of the business to a third party. Okay, so rather than being the the acquirer, you are the disposer, if you like, in this situation. Okay, so um, and if we just look at moving into related markets, for example, this could be you open an office in an overseas market. So this is English football clubs have developed operations in overseas markets. Um, some manufacturers of goods, when they start to operate, they move into an open an office, a sales office in a new territory. Um, some, sometimes this could be a joint um, venture between a foreign entrant and a local company. So Lotto, the Italian sports brand, um, is licensed to Li Ning. So Lotto, in trying to enter the Chinese market, signed um, a, a licensing agreement with Li Ning, uh, the Chinese sports good manufacturer, to actually manufacture Lotto goods and sell Lotto goods in China. So that's a way for um, Lotto as a sports brand to enter the Chinese market through a strategic alliance. So this isn't kind of Lotto being bought up with uh, by leaning, this is a kind of an agreement between the two, um, and you know a, a, another example is acquire a company in an export market. So we've got English football clubs purchase a, a local football club in another country, um, but we've got other examples from other industries there. So there there are a number of examples here to try to illustrate the range, um, and I've tried to select them for a, a range of different kinds of organizations as well um, we can talk about this more in upcoming lectures um, and we can this as well so examples of strategic alliance i haven't included sponsorship on this but i would include sponsorship as a kind of strategic alliance because you're looking to um, you know potentially increase the revenue to allow you to kind of grow your business um, and you're signing a deal with a sponsor who is also looking for benefits. So there are kind of joint mutual benefits for you, but it's certainly not a merger or an acquisition and it's you, you, you're requiring resources from outside of your own organisation. Um, but for example, um, we've got joint ventures where partners set up a new or jointly owned operation. So um, ESPN Sports Stars um, have kind of developed a kind of spot, uh, Fox Sports in Asia kind of development and um, there are some hyperlinks here through to um, other examples of, of this so um, we've got consortia um, usually focused on a particular project and may involve more than two partners and this quite often in sports involves major infrastructure projects associated with very large scale events we have franchising which is the selling of a business concept so we have the US professional sports model, which is kind of, you know, franchises which are offered by the league and which kind of restrict access, but allow the league to grow in a controlled way. Um, we've also, it's also used by other businesses to grow, um, but the franchisee puts the money in rather than the franchising organisation. So the franchisee buys the franchise and it's the franchisee's money and resources which are used to expand the operation, not the financial resources of the organisation, the franchiser. Um, so Bally Total Fitness is an example of this and Curves we've talked about. Those are fitness brands that expanded on a franchise model. Yeah. So the franchisee owns the business and buys the branding and the business model um, and, and some of the kind of bespoke um, or kind of um, the, the, the kind of systems um, that, that the franchising organisation owns. Licensing is where you kind of grant rights to make or distribute a product. So owners of sports brands license third parties to manufacture or distribute their licensed products. So. Um, this happens quite a lot in manufacturing and retailing. So we've, we've talked already about Lotto and Leaning um, and also Sports Direct in the UK and Europe. That has grown on a kind of licensing um, kind of model. Um, so it, it has acquired the kind of rights um, for, for a number of brands 
So Slazinger is an example. Um, and it then manufactures those, but also licenses those brands in other countries as well. Um, subcontracting or outsourcing, this is contracting part of a service or a process out. So outsourcing value chain activities, and we've seen clear examples of that for major sports goods manufacturers. I've also mentioned that in local government sport, local authority sports, most of facility management now is, or a significant portion of facility management is outsourced to either um, charitable trusts or third party um, kind of specialist um, facility management organisations. And then finally, we've got networks, um, which is kind of collaboration of two or more organisations through a kind of mutual trust understanding or some kind of formal agreement. Um, and this could be governing bodies of sport working together, so a kind of racket sports alliance, um, rugby codes working together, possibly, you know, different sports working together. Um, and this can be sports organisations also collaborating with non-sport organisations, so health and sport working together, for example. So there are a lot of examples there and, and a lot maybe for you to take in. And I wouldn't want you to get too concerned about understanding all of these at the minute. Not all of these kind of alliance options are going to be appropriate for you. Some might be appropriate, some will not be appropriate. But I want you to make you aware of the kind of range of strategic alliances which are available out there because these are key tools of strategic growth. When an organisation is thinking, how can we grow? We know what direction we need to go in and we know we want to work with someone. Well, what's the kind of vehicle? What can we use? So this is a wide range of things, some of which might be appropriate to in your, you and your organisation, others of which won't be. So in summary, what have we looked at today? We've looked at how corporate strategy is really concerned with organisations looking at what businesses they should concentrate on. Um, and this can invo involve staying where you are, moving into new areas or exiting existing areas. Um, and the directions, and, and also we saw that, you know, at the end of the lecture, that there are a number of different ways that organisations can look to kind of move out of a particular business or can look to consolidate its position or can look to expand into new areas. So we saw there are a number of methods for doing that. Um, and so the directions and methods matrix or template that I've just shown you is a way of conceptualizing and generating strategic options for your organization. Linked into the workbook this week, there is a blank directions and methods matrix for you to begin to populate with some of your ideas. Um, and there is a kind of preamble which explains it in a little bit more detail to try and get you to get your thoughts together. But that's something that I would like to discuss with you in the seminars coming up later this week um, and also in future seminars as you work now on developing um, the strategic options for your organisation. Today's really Today's session really is the last lecture where we will introduce substantial new kind of concepts and new ways of looking at things. Um, next week's lectures are much more kind of consolidating on where we are. So we've got the assignment briefing next week, which is a kind of um, pre-recorded screencast. And then in the, um, in the seminar itself, we'll look at the um, option screening template, which is a way that you can decide which of the long list of options that I've generated, maybe through a directions and methods matrix, but also through toes analysis, which of those long list of options are the ones which are best for my organisation to pursue um, and are going to be one of the two or three um, strategic options that I'm going to write up and discuss in more detail um, in the assignment that I submit. So for your assignment, you may choose to use the directions and methods template to help you identify which corporate strategy options you think your organisation should follow. Equally, and what I will repeatedly say to you, if, for example, you've already completed TOES analysis and you're finding that through TOES you're identifying options already which you can plot onto this matrix, 
but you're not really identifying new ideas in this matrix, then you don't you don't need to feel pressurized into using this matrix. You know, it's another tool in your strategic management toolkit. It might be there for you to use at another time during your career, even if you decide not to use it within this assignment. OK, so that's all I wanted to say um, for this week. Thanks for listening and I will see you in seminars later this week.